You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Ben Smith. And it wasn't until I wiped it off and gave it a little sniff that I even realised it was, oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week, I'm joined by a musical maestro that is Ben Smith. Hello. Hello. How's welcome it going? to the show. <laughs> Thanks so much. Lovely to be here. I like it when people lie to us. <laughs> <laughs> it is lovely to be here. It's true. <laughs> what have you got for us this week? So this week I'm talking about a celebrity's brother who is stealing the limelight. And then we have a game to play in our game of the week. I don't know if you're supposed to do jazz hands, but I added that in. <laughs> that's okay, jazz hands are welcome. I can't do them. But that's before we get all up close and personal with Ven in Spotlight. On screen now you can see our social media. Just search for at the Could TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the buzz. How do you feel about nature documentaries? I love a bit of nature documentary. A yeah. bit of Attenborough. Uh, Attenborough on a Sunday feels like a nice way to round off the week. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, that, you know. It's a mild hangover, David Attenborough. What more do you need? Sometimes it's just a way for me to like fall asleep, but <laughs> I also appreciate it. <laughs> hey, cool. Um, well, this is a story about some whales who have been, been caught at it, shall we say, for the first time. Um, and just, just off the coast of Maui, so on a nice holiday, and they looked and went, oh, look, whales at it. We've not had whales on camera having sex before. Yay! And then they went, Oh no, there's two boys. <sighs> Male humpback whales literally humping back. My goodness, did they give consent to this filming? Um, I think so, because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't stop going, no, 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 no consent is given. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it's two whales. One, one was decided to be an older gentleman whale, and one's a quite a young. Okay, gentleman. intergenerational. Um, intergenerational. Gay whaling. Exactly, and the twink was topping. <laughs> was what, what came out of it all. Okay. <laughs> You're hitting me with quite a lot of facts here. I don't know what to pick up on. Okay, well, okay, wow. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay, yeah. captured. But captured for the world. That's actually the nicest picture I could find of it. <laughs> there were some quite intimate ones, and they're going, I don't think we need to see penetration. <laughs> but at the same time, well done you. Is that a specific website you find those? <laughs> Very specific website, yes. Um, humpback.com. Not what you're thinking if you're looking for whales. Uh, only fins. <laughs> only fins? Nice. <laughs> you don't want to know what they did with the blowhole. <laughs> Wait, so this is the first ever whale intercourse. Intercourse. That's been captured on film. And it's gay. And it happened this to be a, gay. This is a moment. It is a moment. Um, Apparently, some right-wing people are saying that they were just playing <laughs> because they're not homosexual, because they're whales. Just good friends. Just good friends, yeah. <laughs> Lifelong bachelors, I believe the phrase is. Um, <laughs> Their partner is in work, I guess. Exactly, whale work. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do whales do for work? I don't, I don't want to ask that question, actually. I don't know. Yeah. Um, wow, OK. But it just made me smile, the fact that, you know, whales are at it, which we know that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that the first ones on film were actually gay. Yeah. Gosh, and I mean, well, you know, and it seems like a nice spot for them to have been doing it nice as well. Holiday, you know, vacation, honeymoon, perhaps, possibly, maybe. Who's got the money though? That's well, good. well, interesting. Well, you know, that intergenerational thing there as well. That is also quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, flipping expectations of who might be topping. Exactly. I was like, <laughs> okay, I googled twink top. Huh? Great. That came up with the story. Progressive whales. Exactly. That's what we like to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you feel about zombie apocalypses? Uh, love. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it. Really I'm, into it. We've got some special guests today who want to eat brains. Um, <laughs> Bring out. <laughs> are you prepared for a zombie apocalypse? Um, well, you know, as much as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> the world seems a bit apocalyptic sometimes anyway, so you know, it's fine. Yeah. I, I know when, when Putin decided that he wanted a bit of the Ukraine, mm. I, I, I googled what I should do to protect myself from a nuclear bomb. Mm. Uh, and... Did you answer, find anything useful? The, there were two things that came up. One was try and find yourself somewhere away from windows, uh, like the middle of the house where possible and that sort of thing. And the other one basically said you were f***ed. <laughs> <laughs> so which did you go with? <laughs> I, I, I started to clean out the bottom of my stairs, so I got under the stairs cupboard, and I went, this is a lot of work. <laughs> Close the door. Uh, it's, let's not bother. Where's the gin? Yeah. <laughs> well... In case of zombie apocalypse, some research has mm. been done about where the best place to be is. 
Okay. Okay. Where do you think the best place to be in the UK is if there's a... a in the UK? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, okay, I'm going to say some sort of island. Some sort of island? Maybe. Okay. You know, well, good news is that the entire UK is an island. <laughs> so you are, you are Wait, spot on there. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't, so, shock. <laughs> I am learning a lot so today. Much today. Yeah. This is, yeah. Um, Back well, to it's school. actually Scotland. All right. They said the the best place to be Scotland. Where's that? Case, <laughs> <laughs> the best place I might to know be. something about that. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's actually the Highlands of Scotland. Okay. Basically, because it's it's not very densely populated, mm -hmm. right? And there's lots of things to eat, as in animals and fruit and berries and things. <laughs> not, not Scots. <laughs> not Scots. Well, that's what they might be eating. You can if, do if you're already a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're delicious, delicious brains. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but they said steer away from cities, right? And they've actually said Lewisham. Tower Hamlets and uh, Newham are the worst places to be. <laughs> wow, okay. Right. Really specific, right? Very specific. <laughs> right. And what they do is they've basically graded on population density, uh -huh. access to raw materials, fresh water, and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and basically, if you're in the centre of London, you're screwed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Plus, I mean, it sometimes does feel like a zombie apocalypse in London anyway. I lived there for <laughs> 10 years. Tube some mornings is like, <laughs> are people alive? Especially in winter. <laughs> What's going on? There's that weird, it's still warm but quite cold at the same mm -hmm. time and they get that smell. It's yeah. very particular <laughs> yeah, to the London yeah, tube. Yeah, it's like true. someone has actually died. So maybe it? it's already happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just going on. Uh, well, no, I mean, I, well, the high, have you ever been to the Highlands? I have been to the Highlands. So, you know, beautiful place to beautiful. be during exactly. the apocalypse as well. Exactly. You know, you could find a little, uh, little shack somewhere up a mountain on a loch. Exactly. Maybe a handsome... Scottish, you know, deer We're back hunter. into the porn thing again. <laughs> just saying. Maybe you'll find a whale. <laughs> um, Nessie is, no, I've just realised, <laughs> Nessie is a zombie. That's not going to be good. Because I mean, you'll never, never see Nessie attack you because you can never spot her. No, but did you hear that they caught Nessie having sex uh, recently? <laughs> 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 that doesn't show up on my Google history, surprisingly. And you'd be surprised what shows up on my Google history. <laughs> Great. Well, I mean, lovely. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, well, if Scotland becomes independent, I guess, you know, the <laughs> kids... <laughs> Zombies taking passport yeah, control. It could be a whole other thing, but yeah, lovely, great. Perfect, yeah. And um, if you want to see Zombie Nessie having sex with another Zombie Nessie, why not share it with us at the Cud TV on social media? And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Nicely to stretch there. Um, <laughs> Smoothly. Um, have you ever sold anything online? <laughs> Um, well, uh, <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, I sell music because I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. So I have sold. Are you talking like physical things? You can talk about physical anything. things as well. I've sold some CDs online. I don't think I've sold anything else. I never really got into the whole kind of eBay. That just sell, seems selling like a lot of work. Stuff. <laughs> it is a lot um, of work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this young lady called Cheng Wing Lee from Singapore mm -hmm. decided she was a bit strapped for cash. But, you know, I'm an influencer. Mm hmm. I'm going to sell something that people can get exclusively from me. Mm -hmm. And so we're selling 200, 237 pound jars of farts. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, okay. She'd sold out very quickly. Really? Yes. Um, people were saying that, you know, I just bought it for the curiosity to wonder what they smell like. And the answer is a fart. Mm. But yeah, she was telling people to get them quick because they only have a shelf life for 30 days. Right, it's been tried and tested. Apparently so. <laughs> used fart. by data, fart in a jar. Industry. It's 30 days. <laughs> um, 30 but, days seems quite long, I don't know. I mean, it feels like one of those things... How bungy that farts are. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. It's been a couple like of one of those things, like, as a kid, it's like, you know, smell my fart, or like, I don't know, you farted under the duvet, you know, shove someone's head under there. But I feel like... That's our end relationships. <laughs> Are you still here? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she also said you can customise them. Mm -hmm. Customise a fart. Um, for an extra £395. Uh, wait, sorry. I was customise the farts. The fart. I was thinking customising the jar. Oh, no, no, no. She's not there with a glue gun. She's there going, what would you like them to smell of? Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, and she said for an extra £789, you can have an additional surprise and a photo of it happening. Uh, oh, okay. At that point. Pine is spending like just over a grand on a picture of someone's arsehole. Yeah, but gosh, what is the surprise? Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> surprise, it was a curry. <laughs> there, um, are, there are some choices. Yeah, but she has said she was restocking soon. Okay. But apparently she must be eating some beans to see what happens. Gosh. Well, you know, yeah. entrepreneur. 
Yeah, I think it's just a lot of dirty old men, so I want to smell something that's been around your nether regions. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that is, that's just an industry, isn't it? Dirty old men industry. Someone once offered me money to buy my old underwear. And did you? I sent them my old underwear. Did you get paid? No. <laughs> you were duped. I was duped. So, um, yeah, sorry about OAP that. Daddy 42, <laughs> if you're still watching, you owe me 20 quid. <laughs> <sighs> they were knock off Calvin's anyway, I don't care. Um, but that's all from the bus this week. Well, thanks for that uh, information overloads from whales to farts. I appreciate that. Okay, all involves the bottom. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but coming up next, we have a short break and then bring us the celebrity news. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Ven and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Ven. All right, so first one up, mm -hmm. Miley Cyrus. Fan, are you a fan? I, I like the fact she, she sang a song about being a wrecking ball. Yes. Okay. Because it was quite easy to change that to a wrecking whore. <laughs> Great, yeah. She's done some other songs since then, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, so, I'm not down with the kids. <laughs> I mean, I'm not either. Uh, well, but she did that one about the, the song about the thing and the, the buying herself flowers uh, and stuff. Flowers, yeah. That was, was like last think? year's kind of song that was everywhere, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but she has just released a new one, mm. which is called Doctor, in brackets, Work It Out. Doctor Work It Out. She's talking yeah. about a prolapse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what it's about. Uh, it's an interesting title. Also, song-wise... This isn't actually the story, but I'm just going to talk about the song briefly. Okay. I'd say it's quite hard to beat Wrecking Ball and Flower, both legitimate pop hits, I would mm -hmm. say. I'm not sure how successful this one is. Have you heard it? I've not heard it. Okay. Well, there's a new video, and she's looking great in the video, dancing around quite a sort of shimmy, shiny, shaky, like this. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the moves. Oh, so, oh my God, that's not, that's not where that's supposed to be. But perhaps this is all d a distraction from some family drama that's going on behind the scenes. Mm. That's right. So I know what is going on. Well, uh, Mum Tish Cyrus okay. um, stole Dominic Purcell, who was Miley's sister Noah's partner. So Mum has stolen daughter's partner. Here is, here is Mum and daughter Noah. She already doesn't look pleased, um, does she? No, she does not. Does not look <laughs> Looks marvellous, but doesn't look pleased. Uh -huh. I don't know when this was taken during the, the stealing. He's a little leopard skin thong she's wearing. Um, oh, she yes. winked at me. What, <laughs> what winked at you? <laughs> um, What's not on the face? <laughs> so, yeah, so now mum is with, with this, this partner. Okay. Um, so it seems a bit messy. I and I mean, I don't know how... I mean, that's just Miley. That's just Miley. <laughs> she, being she's Miley. just dancing and maybe not caring so much about <laughs> family drama. She's doing pretty well, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, perhaps not avoiding the discussion. I don't know, maybe it's awkward around the dinner table I don't, <laughs> <laughs> in the Cyrus home. I don't know. Uh, so apparently, like, mum, Tish, has opened up about the relationship and has followed on uh, Instagram saying that he slid into the DMs, apparently. Oh, I mean, how do you feel about sort of stealing boyfriends in uh, general? I mean, people stealing my boyfriends or me stealing other people's? Because that's a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with you stealing people's boyfriends first. I, I tend to return them. I don't steal them. I borrow them. Okay. I, I have them on, it's like a library. Oh, nice. I okay. take my card, I swipe it and take them out. I take Remember them back five days later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take them back five days later. So a massive fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, I think if the relationship is an open relationship and everyone's happy about mm -hmm. that, then that's perfectly fine. If it's a monogamous relationship, then probably not so much. Mm. And how do you feel about stealing <laughs> partners from family members? How have you done well, that? Well, luckily, um, everybody in my family is either with a, a woman or with a minger. So I'm okay. <laughs> Are they watching? <laughs> <laughs> well, that means, okay, so you're fine. So this is it's not, not going to happen. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to be stealing anybody. Plus, plus, we're all of a certain age now that, you know. Well, should we see if he's a minger in your yes, uh, <laughs> opinion? How are you feeling? Oh, he looks I comfortable. <laughs> what, what does that mean? I have to sit on it. It looks comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, from, so from zero to would sit on it. Would sit on it. Well, no, no, 
from zero to would ride it is about in the middle. <laughs> okay, <laughs> different levels here. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Good. Getting to know. Getting to yeah. <laughs> she getting to know and getting slightly concerned at the same time. Well, you it's know, lovely. Um, I'd say he's significantly older than Miley's sister, though. He's yeah, being his fifties at that. Well, hey, if the whales can do it, <laughs> the Cyruses can do it too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to the next story uh, Salma Hayek okay who's she she is a beautiful uh, actress um, appeared in many things including American Horror Story um, amongst amongst other uh, TV programs films she's very like kind of Honest and open on her social media as well. Oh, is she the one that doesn't use any filters when she's doing like yeah, exactly and stuff? Okay, cool. And so actually, so this story is kind of related to that kind of thing that okay. she's uh, sharing a hack for her hair, which has gone a bit viral. And people were like, "Oh my goodness, you know, so it's so real." Is she doing a share? She's shaving it off and buying wigs. Yes, and no, she's not. Because <laughs> that's do. what I started doing, but I didn't have the money for, for a wig, so I'm half share. <laughs> well, I, well, you know, I think both of us are really interested in this story about how we can maintain our hair. Um, well, in beard hair. Yeah. Beard hair, yeah, this could actually, this trick could work for that as well. So okay. basically, it is using mascara to cover up the greys. And so she was doing this instead of, I don't know, dyeing or okay. putting on a wig. Do you remember the early 2000s hair mascara? I, I do not Late actually 90s, early... remember that. Wait, so Christina Aguilera just like the little colourful things in the Oh, hair yeah. There. Okay, yeah, yeah. It used to be literally a it's hair like mascara changing. brush and they used to just rub it in. Did you use that? Well... That's what happened. <laughs> don't use it, kids. It has side This effects. is... It uh, happened to me too. That, yeah. I actually block, <laughs> that blocked it out. This is, uh, you know, <laughs> hair trauma. Yeah. I don't think mascara would work on beards, though. Because, you know, with the ginge. Uh, I don't know. Well, you know, you can dye your beards. Have you ever considered that? I have, I, I have a, a few grey, they're not even grey, they're white hairs that appear in my beard. I can see them. Mm. Where are they? Um, <laughs> I can't see them. You've covered them <laughs> with looked, ginger mascara very well. them out. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I've got a few, few greys going in there as well. Yeah. You're nodding because you can see them. Yeah. Uh, so maybe <laughs> I should you didn't spend this. a couple of hours <laughs> plucking them as well like I did. Another one. All right. Well, you didn't provide me any mascara when I arrived to the studio, so... We don't do that. You know, it's your fault, really. Uh, moving on. So, <laughs> Macaulay Culkin, Home Alone, uh -huh. has many brothers. I see. The story... <laughs> are you ready for this? It's I quite a big story. Okay. It might shock your world. One of his brothers is hot. Oh, okay. That, as far as I can gather, is the story. <laughs> so Not mad about it. One of the younger brothers... There's like seven brothers in the, okay. the Culkin... So he didn't have a TV when he was growing up. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so this uh, younger brother is Rory. He's okay. Thirty-four, and has been. Oh, sorry, Macaulay Bro <laughs> Culkin's younger brother is thirty-four. Yeah, I know. It just it feels wrong. Yeah, it does feel wrong. Well, so when when Macaulay Culkin was doing all the Home Alones, and mm -hmm. this is the brother here. Okay. Long hair. Family Quite resemblance. Long hair. I kind of get it. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah, lots of family resemblance. I feel like maybe just every few years there's just like a new brother that gets the <laughs> the hot, hot, you know, hot story. So I guess it's Rory's turn. Just his turn. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, when I was a kid, I was uh, people often thought I looked like Macaulay in his Home Alone era. Oh, really? Obviously things have changed. Can you do an impression um, of Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? No is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was my audition tape to be the next hot Macaulay Culkin brother, but it's not worked. Um, so, yeah, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, oh, well, from zero to what was your, <laughs> what's going on here? I do that in the morning. I'm like, they're still here. I don't, I don't. Like, Are they still here? Are they still here? Is this it's, like a? So it's a bra. Is this a in a? Film is this just? A I don't know. Shot because he had, from what I understand, he's recently um, been in a, an Amazon Prime show. Yes, uh, I, <laughs> all I know about this is uh, a bowl of strawberries. A bowl uh, of strawberries. Heard, heard any more about this? So I like a strawberry. Well, you might like them even more or less. I don't know. So apparently, in this show, whatever the show is, there's a scene where he presses himself naked. Okay. against a bowl of strawberries and you can sort of see everything. Now, is this you can see everything or you can see outline of everything? Is this like the strawberry version of grey sweatpants? <laughs> yeah, it is the strawberry version of grey sweatpants. Okay, cool. um, I don't know, actually, I've not 
I've not watched it yet. Okay, that's like but yet. So it's like on the list. <laughs> the break. <laughs> <laughs> I might. So you come back slightly out of breath and tired after the break. We know why. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Cool. Oh, here's the family. I mean, it's I guess that's so that's Macaulay, obviously. That's and Macaulay. I guess that's Rory. Yeah. And parents. I think they're all a bit strange, though. So from the the mum and dad. I thought you said strange for a second. I'm like, yes, very strange. But I think uh, the, the the bit of a family breakdown. Well, Macaulay Culkin divorced his parents, didn't he? Yes. Like, yeah. Because and he sort of sued, maybe like sued them as mm -hmm. well. It was quite a big big thing during the time he was only in his teenage years. Yeah. It was Late twenty. Anyway, um, sorry, I'm just trying to work out how hot his brother was. Because <laughs> there, he does look like a kid that's going to grow up hot. Like the Beckhams, when they all had children, they all looked like they were going to grow up decent looking kids. Mm. Yeah. That's a very 90s picture. <laughs> it's a very 90s very picture. Very 90s picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so you get to see. <laughs> Do I look like a Culkin yet? Oh, but we look slightly related, that's scary. Um, <laughs> 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 so yeah, so so the TV, the ear is saying shouting swarm in my ear. Mm, which... Right, yes, swarm is is the show. Okay, with the strawberries. The, the I don't know what the I don't know what swarms about. <laughs> but I know the ones. It's like it's like all these things there. It's like before. I was going to call it bath water. That's how much <laughs> salt. <burn. laughs> exactly. I was actually salt thinking water, about shop, salt bath burn. burn because you could have a crossover where they have strawberries in the bath. Wow, strawberries in the bath, strawberries yeah. and cream. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh no! <laughs> well, you know, so some of these things you know, you know the scenes before you know what the actual things about. Yeah. Have you actually watched Saltburn? Um, I have watched Saltburn. Yes, I watched it. Um, I watched it alone after <laughs> seeing all these people being like, "Oh, I watched it with my family at Christmas." So um, yeah, I had. I told my parents to watch it. Oh, okay. They haven't yet. Well, they're like, "Is it on? Is it on the Amazon?" <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Tell them to watch Swarm as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a nice scene, isn't it? Do you want to see Macaulay Culkin's brother's penis? <laughs> <laughs> no, watch this then. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. I think that is all the showbiz that I can bring you for now. Well, thank you for that. As we all go off and watch Swarm and grab packs of tissues from somewhere, um, <laughs> stick around, because coming up next, we have our Game of the Week. <laughs> Woo! You're watching Chew in the Cud. And it's that time when we all have to reach into our wallets and whip it out for our annual, I mean, annual renewal. Yes, it's time to get your LGBTQIA plus license renewed. So we're going to do some cramming with you as we play gay or nay. And then this one's off for you to start us off. So all right. off you go. Thank you. I'll try not to flash you as I leave. Oh, my. <laughs> Game of the Week. So this week we've got some gay trivia. Okay, so it's historical fact and factoids. Okay, I'm going to ask you one, Ben, and then you're going to do me. Okay? As hey. in questions. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, cool. So, are you ready? As I'll ever be. Good. Okay. So, this is a light-hearted quiz. In 1648, which was just a... Just a <laughs> Recently, only 18 years before Cronenberg was invented, yeah. you're a beer drinker. It was just born. Yeah. Um, in New France, a military drummer received what sentence for being homosexual? <laughs> um, what sentence for being homosexual? Mm -hmm. uh, some sort of terrible punishment that they no longer existed on this earth. They didn't have to listen to the new um, Miley Cyrus song. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, because she wasn't around. Cher, though, fourth album, 1684, whatever it was, um, 1648. Um, so he was given a choice oh, of well, punishments. Nice. In itself, that's a nice start. Yeah. Um, he could accept a new position. Mm, first uh -huh. um, As executioner for the colony, right? Or be put to death. Okay. Well, I think that's flawed because if you need a new executioner, you're going to choose to be put to death, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, Over. I'll choose to be put yep. to death. You've not got an executioner. I'll go to a coat shop then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That is clever. You would have done well during that period of time. I would not have done well during that period of time. <laughs> Just because there was no grinder. <laughs> 
There was. It was just um, analog. <laughs> or it was meat. when you're actually grinding yeah. your bones <laughs> or something, and then you could, you know, have a wink across the fire pit. <laughs> a what across the fire pit? <laughs> After a watching wink. Saltburn? <laughs> oh, a wink! Oh, okay. I've misheard. Um, do you have a question for me? So, in 1957, the report of the Departmental Committee on Homosexual Offences and Prostitution was released for all to read. By what name was this report better known? So, it's a report about gay men and prostitutes. When was it from? 2000 or something? Was it Grinder? 2021. 1957. 1957. You were, what, in your 30s? Oh, it was the second time I was in my 30s, yeah. Um, just remember that I'm only five years older than you. <laughs> um, drag you down with me. It's fine. Um, I would say the New York Times. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The name of this report is mm -hmm. not the New York Times, but the name is the Wolf Wolfenden Report. Is that ringing any bells? <laughs> They said the Wolfenden report. I'm like, oh, I'll screw off. I'm going to send the wolf. The wolf, yes, the woofing report. Woofing report, yeah. He looks fit, wolf. <laughs> yeah. um, so, this was a document prepared by somebody called Wolfenden. He's a lord. Uh, lord of the Wolfenden. I don't know if it's a place or that's his name. Lord Wolfenden. Um, it is rather common occurrence for reports with long-winded titles to be referred to by a shorter, catchier name. And that's the case, which is, you know, strange that you've not remembered this catchy title. Exactly. But I'm not going to forget the Thingy Bobby report ever again. Ex exactly. Woof. It's like just woof. <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, <laughs> not related to the quiz, I just wanted to woof at you. Right, okay, are you ready for me to do you? I am prepped and ready. Well, that's, that's good. It's very rare that I say that, by the way. Um, feel privileged. Once a year, if that. Right. Um, which Perfect. very famous CNN reporter came out in 2012? CNN. Is that um, mm -hmm. standing for something, you know, interesting? The Cartoon Network News. <laughs> uh, who came out? A reporter. Uh-huh. Um, Mr. News. He was known as the Silver Fox of News, which uh, is interesting because he wasn't on Fox News. The, the other one that wasn't on Fox News. <laughs> um, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> Different emerald, yeah. Um, Gillian Cooper, no, not Gillian Cooper, Anderson Cooper. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gillian Cooper's mm -hmm. someone very different. <laughs> yeah. um, Who is Gillian Cooper? <laughs> she used to do the wine show. Oh, did she on come a Sunday out? afternoon, after, just before Songs of Praise. Yeah, before she did the news on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm clever, I'm professional. Um, yeah, he, he was the anchor of CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 show, mm. surprisingly modest. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, he gave permission for someone else to publish an email regarding his sexual orientation, which is nice to get a bit of consent. He gave, it sounds like that email was already going to go out and he then kind of just had to give permission. Said, yeah, all right, then do that then. Yeah, mm. uh, that's happened with some pictures of mine, but different reasons. <laughs> So, anyway, um, I, I'm ready if you want to do me now. I am ready to do you. Oh, memories. So, deep yeah. breath. Deep breath, relax. Relax. This is all about the penal code, something I'm sure you're familiar <laughs> with. Under its new penal code of 1791, insert age-related joke, which European country was the first to decriminalise homosexuality. Under its penal code? Penal code. Penal code. Which we're looking for a country here. Country. The name of a country. Penal code. Penal country. Code country. Penal. Penal. Penal country. Penal country. Code. Code. Homosexuality. The Netherlands. Mmm. Why did you choose that country? Be because I can. Mm. And because well, I thought they're, they're very, they're very pro-gay, very pro-pot, very pro-everything, so... Well, you're wrong. Oh. 
I'm not going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Was it Russia? <laughs> Surprisingly, yes. No. Uh, um, so it, Russia. Is near the Netherlands. It is France. Ah. So this was France's first national penal code adopted during the French Revolution. Uh, it had a sponsor, apparently. Uh, Louis-Michel nice. Le Pelletier said that it only punished true crimes, not the artificial offences condemned by superstition. I'm quite enjoying Louis-Michel Le Pelletier. I feel like at least a strong ally, if not uh -huh. enjoying the penal code. Yes, one of us. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Well done, France. Yeah, well done, France. That's, that's shocking. Um, Très bien. What is your view on penal reform? Uh, well, you know, I, I don't discriminate if it's caught or uncaught, really. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, open views, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all tastes the same. Um, so... <laughs> is this a cooking show as well? It is, exactly. I, I once dated a guy whose nickname was Phil. Okay, um, his name was Mark, but we all called him Phil, as in Philadelphia, because he had lots of. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> in. <laughs> Wait, what, no, no. Oh, that film, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, which was the very first country to introduce same-sex marriage? Ooh. You're like. I actually know this. Mm. Um, can you like, can you give me some clues? Sure. You name like areas um, of the world. It, it has um, borders <laughs> and people which live within it. Mm. Um, it also had a penal code mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, along the front um, and is part of, of Europe. Okay, is it the Netherlands? And maybe this is where you guessed your guess. No. This is the weird thing, right? It was actually Russia. Oh. Wasn't it? was Netherlands. Of course it was Netherlands. <laughs> well done, you got it right. Yay. Yay. This is the first one that we've got right. <laughs> which means currently you are out-gaying me. Ah, well, which is quite hard to do, I'd say. Very hard to do, because there I sneeze glitter. Very good. Um, but stick around, because next we're going to get all up close and personal with Vent and Spotlight. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now, after we've tested each other's knowledge, it's time we're going to get all up in his business as we talk to Ven in Spotlight. So, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? I have enjoyed myself. I've learned a lot. I've laughed. I've enjoyed. Okay. Do you like it when people lie to me? I do. I really do. It doesn't. It's, lies. it's not that important, you know. It does. It happens to everybody. I take it as a compliment. It's all great lies. Um, so you are a musician. That's right. I am a, a singer, songwriter, and saxophonist. I do love the word saxophonist. <laughs> Sax one's a good instrument, you know. It's always mm -hmm. uh, it's always popular. I did learn to play it. Well, I tried to learn to play it. Um, the the exact inf information I got back was you. Good, you're giving it a good try for a percussionist. Well, you know, I mean, for a percussionist, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, you, you don't just pick up the saxophone randomly, you, you went to university with it as well, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I, I've been doing music since I was a wee lad. I first, I think, I started on the, on the piano and didn't get very far with that because my teacher was quite scary and told me I should give up at like the age of seven <laughs> but thankfully I did not give up uh, and yeah I kept on going so I don't know I always really enjoyed like just making things up I think was my my thing about music and then yeah went to uni studied classical music <gasps> uh, um, and did saxophone and composition and then I've kind of continued on in various different ways but now I'd say my stuff is very much in the pop world and kind of queer pop I'd say that's where we're at. Okay, well, what makes your, your, your pop queer? Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I am writing about, you know, stuff from my perspective as a gay man and about what I kind of see in my experience of the world. And But also, I think pop music is kind of inherently queer 
in and of itself. And actually, from a long time, like I probably didn't like release stuff that was like really the kind of poppy stuff that I wanted to release. Possibly because I felt like I had to be a bit more serious and be like a singer songwriter and all that kind of stuff, which I do love sometimes. But also, like I could have fully embraced the synths and the dancing and like the kind of ridiculous of ridiculousness of pop music, but also it's a great way to get across some important messages hidden inside some some pop music. Okay, cool. So do you, do you slip a lot of like hidden messages in or? <laughs> I slip a lot of things in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well I do, I guess some hidden, I do, I do enjoy metaphor. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and so an album that I released last year, which is like my debut album as this project of Ven Smith, and uh, it, some of it is about like coming out and experiencing kind of growing up in my teenage years. Some of it's around more personal stuff around maybe like mental health and relationships. Some of it's just about really rubbish boyfriends and other things in the world that I'm kind of seeing. So yeah, there's lots of different messages in there. <laughs> That's just to the gallery. There you go. Bye. Okay, brilliant. Um, so you mentioned an album there. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what's the album called and where can we get hold of it? So it's called Master of Disguise. Okay. Disguise is mastering them. And it is available on all your usual streaming services, etc. Mm -hmm. So I released that last summer. And I also have a lot of extra stuff on Bandcamp as well, which is just my way of trying to actually make some money as a musician. Just not that easy to do. Um, but yeah, so you can listen to it anywhere and hopefully doing some more gigs and stuff. I did a bit of a tour of the UK last year so i did some i was living in london at the time so I did some gigs in there in wales and in scotland as well but i'm hoping to be doing many more gigs this year particularly pride gigs as well okay, so cool. if md is looking to pick <laughs> any performers hello get in touch <laughs> is there a pride you desperately want to do like the number one pride oh well i mean so i'm now living in salford and like i would absolutely love to be uh, in any of the prides in Salford, Manchester, like all the 10 boroughs I've been learning since I've been here. So I think I've applied to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great to do some stuff whilst I'm here. Um, and of course, like Scotland, it'd be nice to get back up there and do some prides up up that way as well. Okay, cool. Um, and so you, you've mentioned synth pop. Mm. Is, is that very definitely your genre? Yeah, for now, like that's mm. where I am kind of finding my stuff I'm going with like I work with a producer and we when kind of forming the album we're like influenced a lot by like Erasure quite a lot of stuff in there um a little bit of Years and Years as well I also love sort of uh I mean any of the kind of pop like you know Kylie all anything where I guess there's synths are kind of used in a way that isn't it's kind of new and interesting and it, like you're sort of almost like orchestrating mm -hmm. stuff as well. I like, my, my classical music kind of background comes from that. I love kind of harmonies and building up and I throw the saxophone in there whenever I can as well. So yeah, synth pop is a way to describe it. And I just, uh, I'm working on a new track just now, which is going to be coming out in April, which is again, very much in that kind of okay. field. Cool. Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned Erasure there, I had to listen on the way in, in the car. Right, having a bit of a bop along, and I was very much feeling the erasure nice. um, kind of vibe. I'm there going, oh, and the the one about um, your friends can't come over because your mum's there. Mm, yeah, that, so as uh, that one is Master of Disguise, the the title track of the album. So that was very much a kind of uh, a note to kind of mental health and like so when you make up these excuses when you're just not feeling that great, mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, sorry, I can't come out because my mum's over. And at the same time, you're telling your mum, I can't talk to you because my friends are over. But in reality, you're just there by yourself. <laughs> so, um, but you know, wrapped up in a, <laughs> you're nodding <laughs> along. I get that one. <laughs> it actually started out as like a little um, poem. And in the studio, we were like, oh, do you know, actually, this could maybe be turned into something. And it's, so yeah, it's like stuff like that. And if you just listen to it without really think, getting into the lyrics, mm -hmm. it's hopefully just kind of, you know, uh, a nice piece of music, pop music. But yeah, within it, there's like some, you know, deeper, deeper meanings and messages in there as well. But hopefully it's quite a hopeful message, I think, at the end of it as well, which I, th I kind of like in music. I like there to be a bit of a, a, bit of a story arc in yeah. there, you know, there's going to be a bit of a point to it as well, a bit of narrative. Yeah, okay. not like Callum kind of knows Padam, that's just someone with Padam, Padam <laughs> in a few seconds. I don't know, I have written an essay on that, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not yet, but... Uh. <laughs> 
but I have a thing about right, that she ripped off Edith Piaf. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've so, yeah, I have get into that quite often. I've heard. Um, heard I, I shan't shan't get into it now. <laughs> I'll be good um, because it's about you, not about <gasps> my my theories about Kylie Minogue being a stealing unit. What's it? Um, wow. Okay, go so, in. Um, <laughs> All pop music is slightly stolen. What was it say? The, we we you know we steal things and use them in different ways and exactly. you know all that kind of stuff. Just whether you pay pay royalties or not. <laughs> yeah, whether you're paying anyone. Yeah, that's <laughs> another question. I'm not getting paid for anything, so that's fine. <laughs> so um, album's done. Mm. Got another song coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Is a does that mean another album is coming imminently or? A, I am writing constantly, okay. so um, I'm yeah. Hopefully, it will form an album for sure. I'm also like doing a bit of like collaborating as well. And okay, so, cool. whilst I'm pretty new to, to Salford and Manchester, like, I'm hoping to kind of meet some other artists here, do some stuff with people here as well. So I'm kind of I'm open to collaborations. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, who who's like top of the list? Uh, I mean, honestly, like, other queer artists are always up there, and I have done that in the past. Um, it, in real life, in London mostly, but also uh, like remotely. So with some artists, like there's someone in Canada, I've worked with some people in Germany. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really open to kind of just meeting some new people and make some connections and see what kind of comes comes from that. Okay, I think I think there might be a collab with some of our, our friends of the show in there because we've got some queer musicians that we might have to get you in to- contact with. Please do. Yes, um, Set us up on a I blind sh- date. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple. I'll put you all in the room and see what happens. Okay, I'm well. filming it and keeping the rights. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> strangely, that's not the first time that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought that word collab was used for lots of things. <laughs> um, just doing a... Cool lab. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so uh, we've had people like Smash Beyond, mm-hmm. um, Paul Usher. So yes, yeah, yeah. great. No both of we them. We would love to see that happen. I uh, I did a like a queer pop podcast during the pandemic, mm-hmm. and so that was my way of kind of finding loads of other queer pop artists from around the world. And they were both artists that I'd found, and I I don't think I ever spoke. To, Spoke to Smash, we would definitely include their music. Mm-hmm. But I chatted to Paul, so we've never met in real life, but we've spoken. Over Zoom. Uh, mm. so maybe now is the time. Maybe now is the time, yes. Um, cool. So um, if people want to get in contact with you, social media-wise, what's, what's your bits? My bits are available <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> you can find my bits and bobs uh, on all the socials, Ven Smith. So V-E-N-N, like a Venn diagram. Um, and Smith with a Y. Okay. And there's a, is there a lot of crossover in your socials? You did that Venn diagram crossover? There is a lot of did, crossover. I did the maths joke. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone loves maths. <laughs> um, anyway, well, thank you for coming on. It's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, thank you for having me. It's yeah. brilliant. Great. Um, and listen to the album. It's actually a bop. Um, and that's cer- cer- certified bop. Certified bop. Yeah. I, I, I nearly had an accident dancing in the car. But that's because I needed to pee quite desperately. But that's almost the end of the show. (laughs) Just remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Perfect. Thank you for watching and we will see you all soon. Bye. Bye. So yeah, and we just talk about real.